Hi, my name is Yvonne Lacrosse and I'm the Director of Physical Therapy here at Halley Orthopedics. Today I wanted to talk to you about how to prepare for surgery. So there's a lot of things that you can do to just be as ready as possible for when you come home from that hospital day when you have your surgery. The first thing I want to talk to you about is how to prepare your body. So what you want to do is become as strong as possible. Strengthening the muscles in the leg of the, of the leg that you're going to have surgery on is very important because have, your strength will come back that much faster after surgery. So either joining a gym, um, going to physical therapy before surgery, if you ask your doctor for a prescription to strengthen your leg before surgery because of that knee pain, um, some people like to get a personal trainer, whatever, course that you would like to do is just important to work out and get as strong as possible. Another thing that you're going to want to do is to stretch. So really tight muscles are going to prohibit your joint from moving properly. So even important before surgery is to be able to move and be flexible. So stretching the muscles that will help your knee to move freely is a very important thing for you to do so that you are able to gain that range of motion following surgery. Another thing you'll want to do if this applies to you is to lose weight because even an extra five pounds can cause an extra 20 pounds of pressure on your knee. So even just carrying a little excess weight can put a lot of pressure and pain in the knee that's not necessary. So, you know, if you can, you know, even just to drop that five pounds, just think that's an extra 20 pounds of pressure off. Starting an anti-inflammatory diet can be another helpful thing for you to do, and you'll want to talk to your doctor to make sure that's an appropriate thing for you. But arthritis is an inflammatory condition. It causes inflammation in that knee, and there are a lot of foods and things that you can eat to help bring that inflammation down. Also, after surgery, you're going to have a lot of inflammation, so kind of doing your research and learning what helps with that is just a good thing to do to prepare. What you're gonna to wanna to also do is prepare your home. So all of us love those throw rugs that are decorative and pretty around our house, but it's one of the number one causes for trips and falls following the surgery. So what I want you to do is roll up those throw rugs, go ahead and store them in the closet for when you're fully recovered, and just really minimize that risk for yourself. Another big cause of falls are pets. So particularly cats and dogs or any free running animals through the house, they do tend to cause pain um, to my patients. I've had patients where a dog has jumped on their knee following surgery, um, caused their incision to reopen, caused them to have more pain, um, or they'll just get under your feet and make you trip while you're on that walker and just think you're on pain medication, you may be a little bit dizzy, you're not gonna have the best balance right away. You just wanna minimize any risk for anything tripping you. So sometimes patients will ask a friend or a family um, member to take their pets just for a few days until they can come home and recover, um, or just to have them in crates or have them separate from you from where you're doing your therapies. What you also want to do is secure any electrical cords, like if you have lamps and there's cords um, in your walking space, you're going to want to kind of tightly wrap those around tables and get them around edges of the room so that they're nowhere near your walking space. Um, any clutter on the floor, you're going to want to pick up beforehand. Just minimizing those risks for falls is a big issue. You um, want to take a look around and move any furniture that may be in the way of you walking in and out of rooms um, because you have to think you're going to have a walker that requires quite a bit of space and you want to make sure that you can walk through rooms and not have to turn to the side and again compromise your balance. Some other safety features that you'll want to look into are grab bars in your bathroom. So most commonly they're placed by the toilet and in the shower. And that just gives you something extra gr to grab onto for balance, help pull yourself up, um, help lower yourself down into a shower chair. Um, it's just really helpful for when your balance isn't that good, okay? Um, also getting a toilet seat riser with arms. You want the one with the arms so it's easy to lower yourself down and to push yourself back up. Just think those first few days your knee won't be bending that well yet and it's, it's hard to get down to a really low surface. So having that riser will really help you. Um, earlier I mentioned about a shower chair. So getting that shower bench or shower chair in place before you come home and before you have your surgery is just another thing to look into for your safety. Um, 
there's a list of things that you'll want to have. So some we already talked about, but having a walker in place before your surgery is an important thing. Your doctor is going to order a particular type of walker. Um, you know, you can always call your insurance company to see what they cover. They may cover um, a lot of this type of equipment. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask and see what they cover for you as well as having those grab bars in the bathroom. If you can get them installed before surgery, that's ideal. Having the shower chair, the toilet seat riser, a few other things that can help you um, when you're getting dressed. The tricky part is putting your socks on. So that's probably one of the hardest things that patients will say um, that they have to do after surgery. And it's just, they usually need some type of help from a relative or friend just to put their socks on. But if you have something called a sock aid, it really does help. It, um, you put the sock over it and you wrap it around your foot and stick, to, stick your foot in and then you pull up with your hands. It just makes it that much easier. As well as getting an extended long shoehorn can help you to get your foot down into your shoe. And then having a grabber. So you may not be able to bend down to the floor right away, but having that grabber just to pick up light things from the floor or to be able to reach things that you can't reach can be useful. The last set of instructions I have for you is to make a plan. So things that you may not think about before surgery are things like having an idea of where you want to sleep. Um, thinking about you may not be able to get up into a really high bed. It may be hard for you. It may cause you more pain. So you want to think about the easiest place to sleep. A lot of people choose to sleep in a reclining type of chair. They find it's most comfortable. Um, because you're stuck in that same position all night, there's no chance of you rolling side to side like in a bed. Sometimes pa um, patients like to sleep on the couch. It's up to you, but you want just something to start thinking about before surgery. Also, you want to think about um, if you have first floor bathrooms, first floor bedrooms. So again, you can get away with sleeping in a recliner, sleeping on the couch, but if you, it's, if you have a bathroom that requires stairs, to get to, that's something you're gonna to wanna to plan out beforehand. So what's easiest is if you have two walkers because you can walk to where the stairs start and then you'll wanna use a handrail and it's really nice to have a cane for your other hand and then you can negotiate those stairs and at the very top have another walker. So then all you have to do is grab on and then you can go to the bathroom and again when you come back to go downstairs, your walker is waiting at the bottom of the stairs as well. It just makes it that much easier. Having a plan on how to re-enter your home sounds simple enough, but you really want to think about what is the path of least resistance, what's the easiest way for you to get into your home. And by easy, I mean the least amount of stairs. Um, if you do have to do a step or two, it's nice to have a handrail. Um, so just kind of think about the easiest way to get back into your home. You're going to need a friend or a relative to drive you home from the hospital and it's also nice to have them there for that first few days to first week that you come home. You're going to need more assistance than you think you will and it's just nice to have someone there to help you. Also you can ask your doctor about a cold compress machine. Um, it's just a sleeve that provides some compression to help with your swelling as well as it has a cold fluid um, running through it to keep your knee nice and cool so it helps with that inflammation and it helps with pain. It's a really nice thing to have. Also setting up a recovery area is a nice thing to do as well. So um, wherever you may be sleeping or spending the most of your time, you know, a particular room, it's nice to have within your reach things like your eyeglasses, maybe a book that you may want to read, um, having a phone nearby, all of the things that you may need or want having them close by and having a little area set up before surgery so when you come home, everything's right there and ready for you. Now, one thing that you may not think of is when you take pain medications, often people will have a reaction to it where maybe their stomach doesn't feel so good. Um, you know, some people are nauseated, sometimes there's vomiting involved, so you almost wanna think about what would you want to eat when you have the flu? 
um, you need to have some type of nutrients, some type of food to get energy and, and for the healing process. So you may want to think about having things like soup and jello, saltine crackers, things that are easy on your stomach that you'll still be able to eat because a lot of those pain medications require you to have food in your system before you can take them. So just think about that too and add that to your shopping list. Um, one other thing too, when I was talking about going up and down stairs, it's really nice to have a handrail in place. If your stairs do not have a handrail on either side, again, you can always check with your insurance company to see if they will help to cover it. Um, if not, having a friend or a relative help you to install one is just a very good idea to do before surgery.